Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming out, and uh, thank you for your hospitality. I appreciate the deacon for having me and my wife out here. That's my lovely wife, Sherry, over there. Um, she's a blessing to me. She's my traveling companion, and uh, whether she likes to or not, she's I drag her along with me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I th just thank you so much for uh, putting this on. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. And let's uh, look at our Bibles. I'm preaching about what is right music for Christians to listen to. What is right music for Christians to listen to? You're like, Pastor Thompson, why are you preaching about this? Well, there's a lot of young people here, and uh, there's people here that struggle with music, I'm sure. You know, we've all grown up listening to some music in some way, shape, or form. And so how do we discern what good music is, because there's a lot of Christians that listen to music, and they would call the music they listen to Christian, wouldn't they? But we would listen to that music and go, yeah, I don't know about that. But how do we judge what good music is and what good music isn't? Well, look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It's obviously not talking about music, but it's talking about spirits, isn't it? Look at verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ has come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ has come in the flesh is not of god and this is that spirit of antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world year of god little children have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world they are of the world Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. What kind of music does the world listen to? Worldly music, right? Music that appeals to them, music that appeals to their flesh. And these un and, and most of, and what it's talking about is people that would listen to, the, you know, that would not be saved here, right? So look at verse 6. It says, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we can listen to music that has the spirit of truth in it, can't we? And we can also listen to music that has the spirit of error. Now, I would submit to you that Christians should not be listening to music that has the spirit of error. So I'm going to go ahead and pray real quick before we get started into the main message here. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for this great time we could have at camp and just getting out, getting away from our phones to a certain extent here, and technology and and all kinds of things that would just bog us down in life and that we could just get out here and, and spend some time with you, Lord, and spend some time fellowshipping with good friends. Lord, I pray you'd fill me with your spirit as I begin to preach this sermon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So applying these verses to music, we can get a picture of what would be considered worldly, devilish, or godly music, right? So there is a spirit in music. So people would say, Music is just music. It doesn't matter what kind of music it is. Music is not evil inherently. Is that true, though? I mean, obviously, we know that's not true. Do you think Metallica belongs in our church services? No. Do you think Pantera belongs in our church services? No. Why not? Because it has a spirit of wickedness in it. And what makes it wicked? Well, uh, the style of music makes it wicked. And, of course, the lyrics would make it wicked, wouldn't it? So we need to apply these scriptures to what kind, what is the right music for Christians to listen to. And uh, so a lot of Christians, like I said, they struggle with listening to worldly music. You'd be surprised how many people in churches, even like our church, you know, even like this church here, would uh, struggle with wanting to listen to worldly music. Why? Because we grew up listening to it. I, I, when I was 10 years old, Michael Jackson was really popular, right? And I used to go to sleep at night with Michael Jackson Thriller playing in my ear every night. You know, so I had some fag singing me to sleep every night. But, uh, you know, I didn't know. I wasn't saved, obviously, so I didn't realize that that music isn't music I should be listening to. But here's the thing. Music, music is very powerful. And music can get stuck in your brain to where... There's, there's albums that I could still listen to. If I listen to it right now, I would know every drum beat, every guitar riff, every lyric to every song on that album. 
How is that? Because music is a very powerful thing. And we need to understand that as Christians, we shouldn't be listening to music that would appeal to our flesh in that way. Because what's it doing? Well, it's teaching us things that we don't want to learn, right? And so, you know, how do we determine what is the right type of music? Well, you know, we think about this. Music is so powerful that even jingles and commercials I still remember from when I was a kid. Can anybody think of a, a jingle? Yeah, what? Oh, I, I oh okay. Can anybody, oh, still there in there. Yeah, can anybody think of a jingle of a commercial of just anything that you remember from a kid? Anybody? You're not gonna you're not gonna come forth, are you? All right, I get it. So, well, how about? Uh, well, I'm just gonna mention something I thought about when I was writing the sermon: the crispy critter song. Have you ever heard of crispy critter cereal? Yeah, because I'm old. That's why you haven't heard of it. <laughs> but I remember those jingles. I remember uh, rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. I mean, there's just all kinds. <laughs> There's all kinds of commercials that why do why do radio stations play, you know, jingles? It's so you'll remember them. You'll remember, you know, one eight hundred roof life today, and you know, just stuff like that. So, music is so powerful that we we can remember things. We can remember the start of commer- of cartoons that we used to listen to when we were kids, like Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones, you know. I can still remember all those things. I can remember the jingle to Gilligan's Island. You know, shows that I watched when I was a kid, even kid, little children's songs. You know, why do kid, why do little children like little like songs like that? Because they appeal to their age group, right? So, and and some of that stuff's pretty benign stuff, like Rockabye. You know, Rockabye, your bear, and you know, just Old MacDonald had a farm. I mean, I don't think Old MacDonald had a farm is an inherently evil song. But it, so it, it's just something that, you know, that we, you know, we're, we listen to music and it gets stuck in our head. But what kind of music do we want to get stuck in our head? We definitely don't want, you know, Ice Cube and NWA. You guys don't even probably know who that is. But anyway, <laughs> some of you do. But like, you know, there's just music that we don't want to get stuck in our head or we want to forget about that music. Right. You know, we've list, we some of us grew up listening to that. And look, kids. The less you listen to that garbage, the better off you're going to be. That's true. You know, put fill fill your heart with songs about the Lord and godly songs. Amen. I remember a few years ago, I was getting up for an overtime shift at three o'clock in the morning. I was in the I I right when I was about to get in the shower, uh, a song from Ice Cube that I hadn't heard in years just start bumping in my head, like it was a, today was a good day, you know. <laughs> Why? I mean, I'm up at three o'clock in the morning. Today isn't a good day. It's, it's a bad day because I'm up at three o'clock in the morning. But I just couldn't get it out of my head. And, you know, I don't understand why. Like, I didn't I don't remember hearing it in a store or anything like that. But your brain can just trigger things. And you're going to remember those kinds of songs. But how good are you at how, knowing the songs of the Lord, the, the songs that God wants you to know? Well, whether we realize it or not, music is a spiritual thing. And it's something that we have to guard. We have, we're supposed to guard our hearts with all diligence, right? We're supposed to keep our hearts with all diligence. And we need to try to keep that music out of our hearts and out of our minds and out of our ears. Amen. So um, we'll look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians 5, verse 18. If you have your Bible with you, if you don't, I'm just going to start reading. Um, Ephesians 5, 18. See, God, music can have the Spirit of God in it, Right? Music can have the Spirit of God in it. Look at Ephesians 5.18. It says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. But what's it say? Be filled with the Spirit. Well, how do you do that? You know, you can ask to be filled with the Spirit. But also, when we come into church, what we, what's the first thing that we do? We sing. You know, what was the first thing we did here tonight? We sang a song. Why did we do that? So we could get filled with the Spirit. Because that's what it says in verse 19. It says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's the key. Is what, Why are we doing it? Are we doing it so we can all sound good and, and show how well we can sing around each other? No. We're doing it so we can sing to the Lord. Sing in with melody in our hearts to the Lord. So it says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So, God, what, what is a way to get filled with the Spirit? How do we know that it's the Spirit is in the, this type of music? Because it says psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. We sing hymns tonight. You all sing uh, psalms at church, don't you? Don't you see? You guys have the, the psalms of the week. Why? Because God commands us to, to sing those songs in church, you know, which is a lost thing in most churches. Most churches don't even sing psalms. So you're blessed to be in a church where those songs and hymns and spiritual songs are sang. It doesn't have to necessarily be a, a psalm or a hymn. It could be a spiritual song. Now, what makes it spiritual? It's talking about Jesus. It's being very specific about uh, the things of Christianity. It's not just saying, our God is an awesome God. He reigns. You know, that's, that's very uh, generic, isn't it? What God are they talking about? You know, and then just repeating a sentence over and over again, that doesn't make it spiritual. So, and also music can have Satan's spirit in it. So there's, two, there's different kinds of spirits that can be in songs, right? Turn to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse number 13. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse number 13. Looking for my water here. Ezekiel 28, verse 13. Did you know that Satan is a musical being? Look at verse uh, 13 in Ezekiel 28. It says, Thou hast been in Eden... The garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So this is talking about Satan. And so it's talking about tabrets. That's like a, like a tambourine-style uh, instrument. And then... The pipes, you know, obviously pipes are what, you know, people would, have you ever, like, Simon from American Idol says, you know, you have amazing pipes, you know, so he's talking about, like, singing or maybe some kind of musical instrument, but it says it's prepared in thee the day that thou was created. Uh, and I don't watch American Idol, just so you know, I've just heard him say that before, so anyway, I don't even know if he's on American Idol, I don't think he is, but. Um, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 14 says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked upon, or excuse me, up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. See, Satan was a musical being, and he was the anointed cherub that covered the throne of God, but uh, he fell. And so... If he, if he was musical then, when he fell, what, what kind of music do you think he has now? He's an evil, wicked being, right? And so I believe that Satan is the influence be behind all this satanic music that's out. Music is like one of the biggest things in our world right now. You can't go to a hardware store without music playing. And, and sometimes you, you'll come out singing something, you don't, you, you don't even remember where you heard it. You know, you're like... Listen to your heart. It's like, no, don't listen to your heart. Your heart is desperately wicked. You know, that's a bad thing to do is to listen to your heart. We're not supposed to listen to our hearts. We're supposed to listen to the word of God. Amen. So um, what are some examples of famous artists that would have satanic spirit, a satanic spirit in their music? Well, uh, who's ever heard of Robert Johnson? Robert Johnson was, uh, ba was back in the 20s or something, but it's, it's, it was rumored that he sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads. And, be and, he, you know, and people, I've seen actual videos of people that knew him and said that his guitar playing sucked when he left. And then all of a sudden, the next time they saw him, he could play better than anybody they've ever seen play. But if, I've listened to a couple of his songs, and he sings about meeting the devil at the crossroads. He sings about... You know, the hounds of hell chasing him. And you know what? He died young. And so there, it is true, I believe, that the devil well, look, the devil took Jesus to, you know, and, and said, I'll give you all these things if you just fall down and worship me. So if, if he could offer Jesus, who's the king of kings, lord of lords, it was all his anyway, he could offer him everything if he'd fall down and worship him. But what do you think he's going to do with mortal man? You know, Satan deceives the whole world. And so he deceives a lot of people with music, too. And he finds his people that he wants 
to put this music forth with. And you're like, you know, and I, when I preach about stuff like this, people really just fight against me. And I preach against Skillet, which is a, a, rock, a Christian rock band, <laughs> which is just weird that there's Christian rock bands. But anyway, I preach against him and people just get all mad. And, you know, they said that Skillet, Skillet's got more people saved than I ever dreamed of and all this other stuff. But look, that's not the kind of music we should be listening to either. But I'll get to that here in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. But uh, how about Katy Perry? She flat out said she sold her soul to the devil. Eminem sold his soul to the devil. Jay-Z talks about selling his soul to the devil. Beyonce, you know, has two different personas where she comes out as some demon or something. And Kanye West, of course, we know how bad he is. You know, he actually calls himself Yeezus. And uh, he's just a total wicked antichrist. Led Zeppelin. Black Sabbath. And you know what's funny is that Skillet, the, 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 the clip I took heat over, is that Skillet was asked by CBN, which is like, you know, Christian Broadcast Network or whatever. And they asked him, what is your greatest accomplishment to the lead singer? I forgot what his name is. But anyway, that he said, my greatest accomplishment is touring with Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne, you know, and all." he lists all these heavy metal, satanic rock bands, right? So you're a Christian, you're trying to, you know, say that you're a Christian band and then your greatest accomplishment is to tour with all these super satanic, wicked bands. You know, I mean, I, I would never say that that was my greatest accomplishment as a Christian. You know, what, what is our greatest accomplishment as a Christian? Getting people saved, you know, actually getting saved. That's, a, that's an accomplishment, you know, because of, most of us are, you know, are pretty wicked people. Um, and, you know, getting saved is a miracle. So... But uh, just the fact that I was able to get saved is, is a miracle, right? So there's all these, these wicked bands, you know, you got, and I'm going to bring some forth that kids probably know who they are, Billie Eilish. I don't, it's a girl with the name Billie, I guess, but I don't know what that, I don't know even any of their songs, but like it's a really popular person, I guess right now, that's satanic. Um, David Bowie, you probably don't know who he died, I think he's a queer uh, John Lennon, you know, John Lennon sings a song, imagine all the people, you know, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Like, why would you want to imagine that there's no heaven? You know, because you're a wicked, satanic loser. The Beatles actually are, were so wicked, they, they brought, like, the worship of, you know, they brought, like, Eastern religion over to the United States. And they, they said, we're going to be more uh, famous than Jesus Christ. At one point, they said that. And you know what? They're not more famous than Jesus Christ, and they never will be. But they were very famous, a very famous rock band, but very satanic. <laughs> See, people, you know, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, they're satanic too, but people wouldn't, like, naturally say that. Bob Dylan, he's just like, you know, he sings that, you know, in that weird style of voice. I don't know. Some of you guys don't know who I'm talking about, you kids. <laughs> but uh, Bob Dylan said he sold his soul to the devil. Like, if all these people are saying they sold their soul to the devil, why don't you believe them when they say that? You know, you should believe them. So then you got Lady Gay Gay, you know, and Ice Cube. And Taylor Swift is, is a whore, you know. Garth Brooks has two personas also. And uh, Alan Jackson. How about Alan Jackson? You know, what's wrong with Alan Jackson? He's country. He sings gospel music. Well, one of his songs says... You know, where I come from, it's cornbread and chicken. And, you know, he's working hard to get to heaven where he comes from. Right. Is it hard to get to heaven? Do you have to work your way to heaven? I mean, you see how little things like that can implant in your mind. You're like, well, you know, that was just one song. You know, he had to sing that. No, that came out of his own heart. So, you know, he might sing gospel songs that you all know and love. But he also says where he comes from, it's hard to get to heaven. He's working hard to get to heaven. So, you know, country is no better. People think, oh, country is okay. You know, uh, I know a lot of Christians who are like, well, I'll still listen to, to country because, you know, it has that John 316 song or whatever. That's complete trash, you guys. Don't listen to that garbage. Anyway, so does anybody know any other ones that I haven't mentioned? I'm sure there's a lot, but all right. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not game tonight. All right. I have to wake you up. All right. Turn to Ephesians 5.10. Ephesians 5.10. As Christians, we have to discern what is God honoring music and what is not, all right? So how do we do that? 
Well, let's, let's let the Bible tell us what we're supposed to do when it comes to music. Should, shouldn't we judge, uh, you know, spirit, a spiritual person judges all things. Isn't that what the Bible says? All right. Ephesians 5.10 says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So if, if you're presented with some kind of music, don't you think that you should prove that it's acceptable? Yeah, you should. That's what the Bible says, right? And have no, it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So if there's a, a, a band called Black Sabbath, I mean, Black Sabbath indicates that they're into black magic, right? And Black Sabbath is the group that Ozzy Osbourne started. And that's, you know, he, so, I mean, obviously, you know, they have some very evil music that they put out. So what's the Bible say? We're not supposed to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We're supposed to reprove them. So tonight, I just want to give you three things um, three questions to help you discern what is God honoring and Christ honoring music. So let's look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 10. Philippians chapter 1, verse 10. Philippians 1, verse 10. The Bible says, Philippians 1, 10, that you may approve things that are excellent that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. So the Bible teaches us that we're supposed to approve things that are excellent. Is Billie Eilish excellent? Do you think God would say that that piece of trailer trash is excellent? I don't think so. So we're supposed to approve things that are excellent. And look, you know, maybe it's getting quiet just because we're at camp, but maybe it's quiet because somebody, some people are listening to this trash. Hey, if that's the stuff you're listening to, you need to change the station, you know, change it to off. <laughs> so turn to Hebrews 5, 13, Hebrews 5, 13. Hebrews 5, 13 it says for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. So it's understandable when people first get saved and they don't really know the Bible that well and, you know, they flip on, you know, the Christian contemporary music and they think that that's okay. Look, I, I, I've been there. I understand. But, you know, once you realize that it's wicked and evil, you should stop listening to it. Verse 14 says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to what? to discern both good and evil. The better you know the Bible, the better you're going to know what's good and what's evil. And if you've been saved for any amount of time, you're going to know the difference right away when you hear some trashy song being played, you know, Baby I Was Born This Way or something like that. You know what that song is about? Being a queer and being born that way. Is that what you want to listen to, kids? You know, I mean, and obviously I'm not hip on all the new stuff and like rap, I don't even understand it anymore. It's like, and it's like, they all sound the same. Like, I mean, it's not like I listen, oh, I just have caught clips of it. Okay. I'm not saying I listen to it, but you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if everybody has the same style, you know, what's why, why have different artists? I don't know. Anyway, it sounds like crap to me. So not rap, but anyway, um, so now, I just want to, I want to mention something about drums really quickly. So drums, like at Faithful Word, do you guys have a drum set in the back of your church? Like you have someone that's just like, no, you don't, do you? And you know, you know the Bible doesn't talk about, you know, having drum sets in, in, you know, why don't Baptists have drum sets in the church? Well, where does the Psalms talk about bringing drums into the church? Now, I'll, if you say the tabrets, those are like tambourines. They make it sound right. And obviously, you could like make a little beat or whatever, but it's not a bass drum kicking in your ears, right? It's not, you know, that's, you know, and, and that kind of music makes your flesh enjoy the music, doesn't it? And so I just want to make this, turn to Psalm 150. I want to make this point really quickly. We're supposed to praise the Lord on all different manner 
of mu musical instruments. And we're supposed to praise him with our voices and the things that we say. Psalm 150 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. You all know what a trumpet is, right? Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Those are stringed instruments, right? And then it says, praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Now, again, the timbrel is not a bass drum, okay? Just in case you guys didn't know that. I'm not like a super mus musically uh, gifted person. I don't know how to read music or anything like that. But you know what I can discern? The difference between good music and bad music. And you know, one time when I was newly saved, I went to a Baptist church. I didn't know that there was differences between Baptist churches at that time. I walked into an SBC church, which is Southern Baptist church with my wife and all my kids. And guess what the first thing I saw when I walked in was? A set of drums and an electric guitar here. And like, I was just like, oh man, what, what's going on here? And, you know, they never busted out the drum set. They were like, that's the next service. And that was like when we left, right? But they did kind of bust out some music that I wasn't like down with at the time. And, you know, even as a new Christian, I knew that that wasn't good music to be listening to. And so <laughs> I was so spiritual. I just, <laughs> I looked at my wife and kids. I said, don't sing. <laughs> but, uh yeah, because, I mean, if it's not God-honoring music, why do I want to sing it? to the? Why would I sing that to the Lord? You know, it doesn't make sense. So, but the Bible says in verse 5, praise him upon loud cymbals. Now, I've heard people say, well, those are drums. The cymbals are considered drums, Pastor Tom. So what's a cymbal sound like? Anybody, can anybody make a cymbal sound for me right now? Yeah. Does that sound like boom, 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 boom? No, it doesn't. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Somebody give me a high-sounding cymbal. <laughs> yeah, that'll sound like air coming out of a tire, but no, I'll, I'll count that. <laughs> all right, so um, I can't make fun of you when I ask you to do something because then we'll do it again, all right? So verse number six says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise you the Lord. So, I mean, the Bible doesn't talk about, you know, there, it talk, the Psalms talk about all these different kinds of instruments, but drums is not a, a focused on thing. So... And so why, why would you want, you know, you wonder why drums aren't in our churches. Well, there's a reason why, because it's just, it, it, it's, it's not something that the Bible emphasizes in music. You know, what, what is an organ? Well, you know, you, you have an organ at church. Yeah. You have a piano at church. That's a stringed instrument, isn't it? So, and guitar, guitars and all these different types of things are stringed instruments. So, and horns, obviously. You guys have a great uh, orchestra up in, in uh, Tempe. So, but I just want to say that, you know, what is, what is Christ honoring music? Well, someone's slamming on, you know, that puts their little drum gloves on and they're just, you know, wailing away on the drums. Like, do you think that that should be part of the church service? Obviously not. So anyway, I'm going to finally get to number one, number one, <laughs> that was all introduction. <laughs> number one, what does the music you are listening to teach? See, because music has a spirit, but it also teaches, doesn't it? So you can learn things by listening to music. So turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. What does the music you're listening to teach? Isn't it important that if you're listening to music, you know, and it's teaching you something, that it should be teaching you the right things? Don't you think that, that, that you know, don't you think that we should be learning about the Trinity and how Christ saves us through grace, through faith alone? and eternal security, and the rapture coming, and, and all these different things. Those are great things to learn about. But what if it's teaching you something else? What if it's teaching you that fags are born that way? I mean, is that what you, is that what you want to hear? No. So, I mean, it, it does matter what we're being taught by music. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ, the word of Christ, dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. See, the Bible backs itself up once again. It says, singing with grace in your hearts. To who? To the Lord. See, we're not singing for ourselves. When you get together on church, at church on Sundays and you're playing your musical instruments and you're singing 
It's not so you can impress your neighbor. It's not so you can impress the pastor. You know, pa uh, Deacon Russell is not impressed by your singing. You know what? We're supposed to impress, you know, we're supposed to be ju just singing our best to the Lord. And whether that sounds like dogs dying or not, you know, we're supposed to make a joyful no noise unto the Lord. If it sounds like cats in a fight outside, you know, whatever. But if you're singing with your heart to the Lord, that's what matters. Amen. So the Bible says we're supposed to teach and admonish one another. So shouldn't the music we listen to teach us something? That's what the Bible says, right? And we're supposed to teach and admonish one another. So what does the wrong type of music teach? Well, it teaches things about the world. It teaches wickedness. And so turn to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. See, God tells us to, to get away from the world. See, when we get saved, you know that word sanctified? That means set apart. We're supposed to set ourselves apart from the things of the world. Would that include the worldly trashy music that you've been listening to? Yes, it would. And look, you know, if you're, if you're struggling in this area, then get it right with God. Just throw it all in the garbage, throw it in the dumpster. And I, I realize that most people don't even listen to music on what we would call CDs. Uh, there's these things called CDs that we used to listen to back in the day and tapes. I mean, tapes were a thing. And then even, you know, eight tracks. I, I was, that was before my time, though. So, but CD, you know, then you got the MP3s and all that stuff. But you can just push delete, can't you? Can't you get that trash out of your phone? Can't you get that trash out of your uh, ears by just saying, you know what? I'm going to turn away from this, you know? We're not, we don't repent of our sins to be saved, but you know what? We should repent of the wickedness that we're doing in our lives as a Christian and set ourselves apart and let God work through us. So um, look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Will that include worldly music? Yes, it would. Would that include the top 40s? Would that include your favorite country singer, Alan Jackson? Yes, it would. Would that include your heavy metal rock and roll? Yes, it would. And it says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So the world is going to pass away someday. You know, and so what, what music should you be focusing on? The good stuff, the stuff that's going to teach you sound doctrine, the stuff that's going to teach you, you know, the things of the Lord. You know, if you sing the Psalms, you're going to learn all kinds of great doctrine. And even, you know, so you're going to learn stuff in the Psalms that you're not going to even learn in your hymnals or in other spiritual music. Because most of that stuff is all, you know, it, it doesn't have any hatred in it. And you're like, well, Pastor Thompson, we're Christians. We shouldn't hate. Come on. You know, there's things. Sing the psalm. Sing Psalm 139. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. I mean, those are songs that we should listen to all of it. We should make sure that we have a balanced diet and that those that music that we're listening to is teaching us all things in the Bible. Not just the love. You know, of course, love has its place. But there should also be doctrine that it's teaching us. It shouldn't just be... You know, shout to the north. You know, <laughs> that stuff's trash, man. You don't want to listen to that. That is, you know, it's it's patterned after the world. So I'll get to that. But uh, contemporary Christian music teaches shallow Christianity, doesn't it? I mentioned our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, love. Our God is an awesome God. And, you know, that's that's the kind of shallow Christian music that we don't want to listen to. You know, and half these contemporary Christian people aren't even really saved. Probably more than half of them, probably a very big percentage of them aren't even saved. And a lot of them end up coming out as atheists. I remember reading an article where one of them turned out to be an atheist and tried to kill his wife. You know, I mean, and what are we supposed to be focusing on music to the point where we're following people and listening to concerts of them? You know, don't we, we, we sing songs and hymns, hymns and spiritual songs to teach us things? What is contemporary Christian music teaching you? 
It's not teaching you anything. It's teaching you how to be patterned after the world. And what did the Bible say? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Point number two, what does the music you listen to bring forth? What does it bring forth? So number one was, what does the music you are teaching or listening to teach you? You know, it's important to, to have it teach you and to listen to the right things to have it teach you. But what does the music you listen to bring forth? Because everything brings forth after its own kind, doesn't it? And, you know, anyone or anything that teaches should, ju should judge by what it brings forth. Anyone or anything that teaches should, should be judged by uh, what it brings forth. So if the music is wicked, it's going to bring forth things that are wicked things, right? You, you, you can't get uh, goodness out of satanic heavy metal rock and roll. You can't. And so what is it going to bring forth? Well, look at Matthew 7, verse 15. We should be aware of what the music we listen to brings forth. Not only what it's teaching, but what is it going to bring forth? Because, you know, a lot of people... They get involved in heavy metal and satanic rock and roll. And look, even now the rap, there's like some dude that made satanic Nike shoes. I can't remember what his name is. Huh? He's a fag. Yeah, he is. Little Nas X. Little, he named himself after an energy drink. Congratulations. Um, or Fast and Furious or something. I don't know. But anyway, you know, that's the kind of rappers that are out there today. They're wearing dresses and stuff. I mean, things have changed. <laughs> so it, <laughs> things have changed a lot. But, you know, it, it's, it's even more wicked than it used to be, in my opinion. But uh, so Matthew seven fifteen says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns? or figs of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. If you're singing the Psalms and, and good sound hymns, is that going to bring forth evil fruit? No, it's going to bring forth the Spirit of God it's going to fill people with the Spirit. It's going to teach people what uh, sound doctrine, and, and, and it's going to help you, you know, sing unto the Lord and worship the Lord. So, but it says, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So if rock and roll inherently is evil, which I believe it is, then how would you say that Christian rock is going to bring forth something good? Isn't it bringing forth after its own kind? It's not, it's, you know, if it's like heavy metal Christianity, screamo music that's saying, you know, it doesn't, you know, most of the time those, that music doesn't even mention Jesus. And if it does, it's kind of like a Nicolas Cage, you know, or, uh, you know, some Hollywood actor that mentions Jesus every once in a while or something. It's not good. So, and look what it says in verse 19, every tree that bringeth forth not good or not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast in the fire, fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. So what does the world's music bring forth? What does it bring forth? Well, it brings forth death. It brings forth death. Um, famous singers that you could think of that died before the age of 30, one of them would be Jimi Hendrix, right? What did his music bring forth? Drugs. I mean, all that stuff in the 19, in the 1969 and this awakening so-called where everybody's fornicating and doing drugs what did it bring forth it brought brought forth these wicked type of rock singers you know woodstock you know they're all high on drugs they're all fornicating and and just singing wicked music and wicked lyrics against the lord what about jim morrison what about kurt cobain what about hank williams senior what about Amy Winehouse? What about Janis Joplin? What, what do these people all have in common? Well, they all died at an early age. And so, you know, what does the world's music bring forth? It brings forth worldliness. And, and it brings forth singing about things that we ought not to be involved in. What does contemporary Christian music bring forth? Um, 
and look, I'm not a big expert on contemporary Christian music because I don't listen to it, but I do know some people, some people's names like DC Talk, Ray Bolts was a queer, you know, he turned out to be a queer. Clay Aiken, I think, turned out to be a queer. Um, you know, Ray Bolts sang that song. Uh, it was like, thank you for giving to the Lord. And he came out as a queer, you know. So everybody that listened, every Christian that listened to that had a queer singing them to sleep at night, too. So anyway, um, so Genesis 124. Let's turn to Genesis 124. Genesis 124 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So when God created everything, he made everything bring forth after its own kind. You know what? Human beings produce human beings but you know what when when you talk about bringing forth things after its own kind what does satanic music bring forth things after its own kind Sat satanism what does contemporary christian music bring forth it brings forth you know after its kind and its kind is patterned after the world Con most contemporary christian music is patterned after the world even the hymns that they try to do covers for sound like crap they do they don't sound good to me. I'd rather hear a congregation singing these great hymns of the faith than to listen to some breathy queer sing them, right? So number three, and this is my last point, what is the, the uh, music conformed after? What is the music that you listen to? What is it conformed after? Um, the contemporary Christian music is patterned after the world's current music, like I said. Turn to Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. So the Bible tells us not to be conformed to this world. Look at verse 1 in Romans chapter 12. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What's your reasonable service? To present your, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is reasonable. Isn't it reasonable since Christ saved us to live our lives for him and to give our bodies to sacrifice? You know, he doesn't want, he doesn't expect us to sacrifice lambs on an altar. Christ already did that for us. He's the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. But, you know, we're supposed to be a living sacrifice. So the sacrifices that were brought in the Old Testament were brought and they were killed, right? But he wants us to be a living sacrifice for him. Look at verse number two. It says, and be not conformed to this world. So isn't conformed, you know, you know you're, you're, you're being formed to the things of this world. And God said, I don't want you to be conformed to the things of this world. What are the things of this world that we're talking about tonight? We're just talk, we're talking about worldly music, contemporary Christian music. What should we be listening to? Psalms, hymns, spiritual, song, or spiritual songs. So... And we're supposed to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you get saved, hey, renew your mind. Get that garbage out of your brain. And you know what? Like I said, things can creep up and, and enter back into your mind again because it's just in there forever. So listen, listen, kids, if you're listening to me, listen to this. You can't, you know, everything that goes in your ears, you can't unhear that. Everything that comes into your eye gates, you can't unsee that. So think about the things that you watch. Think about the things that you listen to because they might become part of your permanent memory bank. And if you don't want that to be wicked, worldly, ungodly music, you know, you have Christian parents that brought you to a church camp. And you're like, I didn't know I was going to be, you know, being attacked over the music I like. Well, welcome to church camp. That's what it's for. I mean, I've, I've been to a lot of church camps, and a lot of time it's preaching hard on sin. And look, I mean, you don't have to admit to me that you're listening to it. I already know you are. So <laughs> don't try to fool me. I'm a pastor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I know it. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, so look at what it says. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to transform our minds. And what does that mean? Getting rid of all that trashy music and leave it behind. And if you're listening to it now, your par- you know, my parents don't know, but I'm listening to it. Hey, you're wrong. You should be obeying your parents and the Lord for this is right. And your parents know, if, if your parents don't know you're watching it, if your parents don't know you're listening to it, and you know that they wouldn't like it, then you should get rid of it. And don't sneak around behind your parents' back and do things that you're not supposed to do. You know, you know what they want, but kids are sneaky. And look, you think you're getting away with it, but guess what? God sees everything that you do. He doesn't see things the way we do. And yeah, you might be able to trick your parents and fool your parents and things, and you might be able to get away with listening to this, you know, Nos X 360 or whatever his name is. He's a fag. Why would you want to listen to that? Why would you want a pair of tennis shoes that have drops of human blood in them? That's what he, that's what he made, like some, some Nike tennis shoes. And to get, you know, whatever, he, you know, he's a Satanist. And he's, a, you know, homos and Satanists go hand in hand. So, um, so we're supposed to prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That will of God, the, the things that God wants us to listen to. And you know what Christian rap is? Crap. You know what? And and that crap is, uh, you know, uh, Lecrae and, you know, all these different uh, Christian so-called rap groups. I mean, if you listen to that, uh, Pastor Jones was on a kick where he was preaching against it. And, man, I couldn't even handle listening to it at all. But it's just so trashy and so garbage. It's not something that, you know, they're like, well, they're Christian. They're talking about Jesus. Yeah, but they're the music is bad, okay? And so you're like, well, I don't know music can be bad. If it's patterned after the world, if, you, if you've been paying attention, if it's patterned after the world, if it's not the right kind of music, they're not the right kind of thing that God will want you listening to, If it's again, if it's patterned after the world, it's not good, okay? What is Christian rock? It's a crock. It's garbage. <laughs> so... And like I said, these people, they come out as, you know, supporting homosexuals all the time. This Lauren Daigle and, you know, I don't even think she's really a Christian. Maybe she is, but, you know, as far as like a Christian contemporary, but I think that she's like came out for the queers or whatever. There's a lot of queers in the industry. You know what? A lot of the Christian contemporary music is, we call, I call it 7-Eleven music. Who's ever heard that term 7-Eleven music? Nobody. Good. Okay. Here's what 7-Eleven music is. Christian, it's Christian music whose songs have lyrics that contain only seven words or lines, which are sung 11 times in a row. <laughs> so it's like, you know, basically, you know, and obviously that's borrowed from, you know, the store 7-Eleven. I like 7-Eleven, so I don't like 7-Eleven music, though. And that's basically what Christian contemporary music is. Our God is an awesome God. He ran, you know, they just sing that over and over again. They sing the same seven lyrics. 11 times, all right? Here's a quote from Amy Grant. Who's heard of Amy Grant? Okay, she's a supposed Christian uh, contemporary artist. She said this, I know that the religious community has not been very welcoming, but I just want to stress that the journey of faith brings us into community, but it's really about one relationship. The journey of faith is just being willing to and open to have a relationship with God, and everybody is welcome. Everybody. Sounds like she's a, a fag hag, doesn't it? Sounds like she, you know, she has a, so she, what the article I got this from, she's talking about how she has, she's known for a long time that she has an LGBTQ following. Well, you know, and so she's basically just kowtowing to them and, let it, and, and, and trying to, she's a mouthpiece for Satan. She's basically just uh, saying that these people are all welcome in God's kingdom, and they're not welcome in God's kingdom. You know, and obviously I don't need to preach that sermon, but it's just a fact. So I need to skip down here. So just as, a, you know, I'm going to conclude this here. I'm almost done. I only got like 10 more pages left, so um, I'm only kidding. So here's the thing. Music is not amoral. What does that mean? Well, amoral means that it's not, it's not amoral. Amoral is this, not involving questions of right or wrong without moral quality. So 
Music is moral. It's going to have morality or immorality. There's no like, there, there's no just, oh, this is just totally benign music. There's, there's going to be right and wrong, okay? There's right types of music and wrong types of music. Here's an example for you. In 2 Kings 3, Elisha asked for a musician to play an instru instrumental music. And when Elisha heard the music playing, the hand of the Lord came upon him. Do you remember that? And, and I'm not going to have you turn to the Bible verses about it. but um, So this music must have been godly music in order for God's power to come upon him as a result of it. And so he asked for a minstrel to come, right? And what is a minstrel? It's a musician, one who plays an instrument. So, but here's the thing. And the instrument itself might not be evil, but it's the way it's played that is. It's the, it's the music that's played, the, the, the sound that's played with it. Uh, or, I mean, the, the lyrics that are played with that music, but also the sound of the music can be. Have you ever listened to something that made you feel depressed? Have you ever listened to like that? that like really luminous dark sounding music you know that makes you feel a certain way because that music is disturbing to you for a reason or like you know the the halloween music or you know it's just you know, there's certain music that sounds scary um there's certain music that'll make a kid just get scared I, my granddaughter was listening to hickory dickory dock all right and that isn't necessarily an evil song but here's the thing so it's, it's saying all these different things that ran up the clock, the, the clock strikes one, the mouse ran down, right? Who's heard that song before? Anybody? So there's a part in that song that she was listening to, and the music chords changed to like a really om, ominous sounding music, and she got scared from listening to it. Why did she get scared from listening to something that's music? Because it's not good. That's why. It's because so why would a little child just be scared over music? It's not like the lyrics were scary, but the music itself scared her, and um, so that's just a, a fact that musical instruments played a certain way can make you feel different ways. You know, there's certain songs that we sing as Christians that uplift us more than mo than other songs. Um, so the me the way the music play is played does make a difference. So. Now, here's an example of something that was a bad example of music being played, and it was just musical instruments. It didn't say that there were songs or lyrics to it. In Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar commands instrumental music to be played while people worship an idol of himself, right? Didn't King Nebuchadnezzar, he set up an idol, and then he said, if you don't fall down when you hear all the sounds of all these different types of music, then you're going to be thrown alive into a fiery furnace, right? So do you believe that God would be pleased if the same music was played to worship him that Nebuchadnezzar asked to be played while they worship that idol? What type of music do you think that was? Do you think it was, you know, CCM? I mean, do you think that it was, would, do you think taking what, what I, we don't know what the music sounded like, but we do know what it was used for. So if it was used for worshiping an idol, then you know that the music itself was being played in a way that is not, not godly. So um, who's ever heard of the tritone? The tritone, it's like a way of playing the music and it, like, and it, makes, it, it, it makes a confusing feeling in people. Um, but it also makes people love that kind of music and a lot of rock and roll is based upon it. I'm not going to go into a big thing about about it, but there's a song called Hallelujah. Who's ever heard the song Hallelujah? It's not the Christian version of it, okay? But here's just like the first stanza of that song. It says, now I've heard that there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor falls, the major lifts, the baffled king composing Hallelujah. That lyric right there is explaining what the tritone is. And a lot, that's a very popular, do you think, should we play that song, Hallelujah, in our church service? Absolutely not, because it's not talking about good things. It's not really praising the Lord. Now, what does Hallelujah mean? Does anybody know what Hallelujah means? Doesn't it mean praise the Lord or blessed be the name of the Lord? So if that's what it means, well, why isn't this good? It's talking about Hallelujah. How come Bon Jovi living on a prayer can't be played at Faith and Word Baptist Church? 
You know, it's talking about prayer, isn't it? I mean, how, look, people try, you know, I, I think I've heard Pastor Anderson say something about like people were, tra- were changing the lyrics of an ACDC song and calling it, we're on the highway to heaven or something like that, right? Is that, is that okay to do? You know, if music is, doesn't, if it doesn't mean anything, what, what type of music it is, the, the, the actual instruments themselves, then why isn't it okay to play that kind of music in church? Why? Because, because it is moral or immoral. There's not, it's not just a benign, you know, ACDC isn't a benign sounding music. You know, when it's talking about the highway to hell, it's all electric guitar and pounding drums, isn't it? So, you know, drum, drums get a rhythm that makes you want to dance and move your body, doesn't it? That's what rap music does. That's what club music does. That's what techno music does. That's what, you know, country music does. And so what kind of way does it make you want to move your body? Well, a lot of these places, these clubs that, that this music is played at, they're sensual and worldly dancing. The Bible says praise him in timbrel and dance. It's not talking about, you know, dancing on, you know, next to each other closely and things like that. So, you know, it's a different kind of dancing. See, there's ways to dance that are wicked, and there's ways to dance uh, that are okay, apparently. David danced before the Lord with all of his might, didn't he? We don't know what that looked like, and I'm not going to give you an example of it, okay? Because I just don't, I'm, I just don't dance well, you know? I don't know. So <laughs> I just don't think that'd be appropriate right now. <laughs> but isn't it true that drum, don't, don't drum beats and things like that Look, that's what makes people get up and want to dance and bob their head and do all this stuff. And so if it's appealing to the flesh, then it's not going to be something that's spiritual. It's not going to be the type of music that we should be playing in church. Turn to Exodus 32. This will be the last scripture I have you turn to. Exodus chapter 32, verse 17. And then I'll just review the points and I'll be done. And just let me say this, if anything I said about music tonight disagrees with anything that Pastor Anderson or Brother Corbin teaches, I'm wrong, they're right, okay? <laughs> so just strike strike it disannulled or whatever. But listen, so remember Exodus 32 is when the big revolt against Moses happens, the first one after the law of God is given. Moses goes up and gets the Ten Commandments, right? And so they're on their way back down, and God God tells him to get down quickly because the people have corrupted themselves. So this is the, ch- the same children of Israel that said, you know, they agreed to keep all the, all the words of the Lord. They said, just let him not speak to us. You speak to us, Moses. They were scared. They were deathly afraid. But here's the problem with us. Here's the problem with human beings is that we're always, you know, in a bad situation, we're going to go back to the, to the, to the uh, vomit you know, the dog is going to go back to the vomit and the hog to his wallowing in the swine, or in the a swine to his wallowing in the mire. Sorry. Um, Exodus 32, verse 17, what's it say? And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, so they shouted, right? And he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. So does this sound like it's Christian music being played? Well, you know, the sound of war, what would you think the sound of war in a camp would be? Shouting, drums. I mean, what do most worldly armies use to go into war with? Drums. And I can't prove that they're playing drums here. I'm not trying to prove that. I'm just saying that Joshua thought it sounded like war was about to happen. And, and what's it said? And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing, do I hear. What were they doing? You know, they had corrupted themselves. They would made themselves a golden calf. They were worshiping these two golden calves. And Moses, or I mean, Aaron had stripped them naked under their shame. They're dancing and they're shouting and, you know, Joshua hears them and he says, it sounds like they're at war. Isn't that what a heavy metal concert <laughs> sounds like? Isn't that what these rap concerts sounds like? You know, but it says, the noise of them that sing, do I hear? 
What kind of music are they singing? They're singing whatever it is. It's, it has to do with worshiping golden calves. It, it, it has the sound of war to it. And it's a noise of them that sing. Do you think that they're singing Christian music here? No, they're not. It says, and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh into the camp that he saw the calf. So Moses, what's he do? He sees the calf. He's like, oh, really? And then he sees the dancing. So didn't the Bible say it's okay to dance? But why is Moses mad here? Because it's not the kind of dancing that the Bible is saying is okay. It's dancing that's wicked. And it says, and Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. So whatever Moses saw, whatever Moses heard, made him so mad that he took the original Ten Commandments and smashed them onto the ground. And it says his anger waxed hot. You know, when God was so angry, he was ready to, to destroy the children of Israel and make a new nation for Moses. But Moses stood in for them and, 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 and took their back to a certain... And he's just like, don't kill them, Lord. You know, he, tried, he talked them out of it, but... And, but what, what's the remedy for this? It says that he took the calf, which they had made, and burnt it in the fire, and ground it into powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel to drink of it. Listen, if you're, if you're going back to this uh, worldly music, if this is something that you're into, you need to get out of it. You know, and it, you know, it's easy to get back into things. It's easy to backslide. Look how easy it was for the children of Israel. God's thundering down the Ten Commandments. They're afraid. But they're afraid of Moses. And then, you know, all he does is takes off for a little while and they corrupt themselves to the point where they're singing and, and dancing uh, and, and singing. And, and what is the type of music? Is it good music or bad music? Is it good dancing or bad dancing? It's bad, isn't it? So just to review, what does the music you were listening to teach it, it. It should be something that's teaching you. The music you listen to should be teaching you uh, great doctrine and, and, and how to serve and worship the Lord. And what does the music you listen to bring forth? What does it bring forth? Does it bring forth good things or does it bring forth bad things? And look, anything that the world is pumping out today is not good, okay? If it's on the radio... It's, not, it's probably not good. If it's on television, it's probably not good. If it's on YouTube, it, it might be good. It might be Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. All right, but you got to control what you're watching. you got to control what you're listening to. You need to guard your ear gates, and you need to guard the things that you put into your eyes because you can't unsee them. You can't unhear them. And what is the, what is the music conformed after? What is it patterned after? Is it patterned after the world, or is it patterned after the things of God? And so, how do we know what good or bad music is? Well, the Bible helps us to understand that. And so, hopefully, uh, if that's something that you're into, listening to worldly music, even contemporary Christian music, you know, if it's bad, you should stop listening to it. If it's patterned after the world, you should stop listening to it. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly